historically, we have been at a very skeptical place for the last century or so. Uh, the, the collapse of positivism, the rise of existentialism, and any number of other movements that have been, have become household names, all of them are okay, very skeptical at their core. Uh, and as a result of that, they doubt that there is such a thing as truth, such a thing as knowledge, facts, uh, uh, and that we're in some sense trapped in a kind of, of subjectivity. Now, that then could go in a you know, couple of directions. One then is to say, well, you know, if nobody really knows anything, then we should all just be very tolerant and let everybody do their own thing and believe whatever, because nobody is in a position to say that I'm better and you're worse on, on whatever the issue is. But the way it more often comes out uh, is that it's very hard for people to live that way, saying, I don't know anything, nobody knows anything, and we're all just going to go off and do our own things because uh, uh, people want their lives to be meaningful and typically they want uh, to be committed to something and typically uh, they have a social uh, value framework and in many cases a political framework that they want everybody to live in terms of. Mm -hmm. So what they will then typically do is uh, adopt what you're referring to as a new kind of authoritarianism. You know, if it is the case that nobody knows anything, there's no such thing as a true reality out there. It's all just subjective, uh, uh, value beliefs and, and the things that have been conditioned into us, well, I might as well just plunge into the fray, right? I might as well just say, here's what I happen to believe. This is what seems significant and meaningful to me. And I'm not going to claim that it's true or that it's objective. Uh, but and, and, I'm, and I very well recognize that there are lots of other frameworks out there. But really, we're just a bunch of people with our own subjective frameworks in competition with each other to see who's going to prevail. And I just want my viewpoint to prevail. And so I'm going to use any techniques, including authoritarian techniques, if it's going to enable my view to, uh, to prevail. So you can get an authoritarianism out of that kind of skepticism as well. I'm not, I'm not a Nietzschean. I learned a lot from Nietzsche, but I think he is the most uh, influential philosopher for the last century or so. So Nietzsche is a very uh, fundamentally subjectivist uh, uh, philosopher with respect to, to knowledge. Uh, he's standing at the end of a long tradition of skeptical philosophy, and he comes to believe on all of the major issues about perception, about our forming of abstractions, about our memories, about our ability to, uh, to, do, to do grammar and linguistics and to form scientific theories and narrations and so on, all of that is, uh, uh, is driven by skeptical arguments that have hollowed out any positive account of those. So we're just left with subjectivism. And then there's a kind of relativism that, that, that comes out of that. So then uh, Nietzsche, though, is also uh, first generation thinkers to grapple seriously with evolutionary ideas. And uh, partly this means that you know, kind of, uh, you don't see reality as fixed uh, for all time in terms of one stable framework, that reality itself, including humans as organisms are evolving. And so what's you know, good for uh, this organism at this time is going to be different from what's good for that, uh, that kind of organism later. And so you have the idea that the rules of the game are, are, are evolving over time instead of fixed absolute truths as well. But you also get this idea that, well, look, if there's no such thing as truth, there's no such thing as you know, rationality as figuring out objectively what the facts of the situation are, if it's all subjective and this evolving uh, struggle and rivalry, then you do start to start uh, using language like power a different way. So then it is just a power struggle between the strong and the weak. And the strong have their narrative and their subjective preferences and the weak have theirs. And it's not going to be decided by truth and decency and uh, universal rights because we don't believe in those anymore. It's just going to be a naked power struggle. So there, a very adversarial understanding of power comes out of that. And Nietzsche is uh, one of the most uh, clear sighted on that issue. And then the 20th century is largely, largely inheriting that.